Hey, how's it going? So we're back with Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars. And in the last episode, we uh, started this uh, sort of crazy adventure with Nico. In this episode, we're going to meet our main character, George. Now, George is a little bit hapless, bless him. <laughs> so basically what's happened is the terrorists that <clears throat> blew up the uh, cafe, we believe to be the same guy that uh, killed Pierre Cochon in the last um, in the last episode because he used a costume and uh, we're going to head into the cafe to see if we can do anything to help <coughs> excuse me for my voice I've got a frog in my throat it was the body of the old man it was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before oh so he is dead so this is the guy we were meant to meet as Nico if you remember the sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. Damn. Okay. So let's go talk to the... The waitress was clearly suffering from shock. I'm surprised she's alive. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, you went not at the party, love. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? Okay, so are we going to lie or are we going to tell the truth? I think we should tell the truth. No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. I guess a little can't hurt. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a teat on it. <laughs> I guess a little drop won't hurt. Jesus. Ah, that's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. Bloody hell. I'm glad I wasn't picking up the check. It's just literally not... Oh, okay. Yeah, she's off. Hey, wake up. She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. I think the cafe is beyond a cappuccino at this point. <laughs> okay, let's see what this does. Oh. I hope the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. Mm, probably. Let's see if that's revealed anything, because it's a mirror. The so. mirror is smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. Mm. Okay. I don't think there's much more we can do here, so let's, let's leave for the time being. And uh, I think we can head down this alleyway here. Hopefully this guy may have seen something, so maybe we could talk- Oh, hello. Freeze! Hold it, right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? <laughs> I demand to see the American consul. <laughs> Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Mu. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Marsh. So I suppose it was uh, only a matter of time before the police arrived, right? What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. <laughs> oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Sergeant Moo is so funny. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? 
Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Uh, yes, we did. He came in with the uh, just after yes, we sat down. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Uh, tell him about the clown, definitely. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Move. She'll live if she survives the hangover. <laughs> she doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd, don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe, I wonder? Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> oh, no. I honestly believe you are in no danger. Mr. It wasn't targeted for George, was it? Do you remember anything of importance? <clears throat> Please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Okay, so now we get booted out because obviously it's a crime scene. And look who showed up. The girl presented a confident but sullen mask to the world. An expression more suited to the face of a delinquent youth. Charmed. Um... Again, guys, there's going to be a lot of talking in this uh, in this game, so I'm not going to talk through it because a lot Excuse of it's me, very important. So I'm going to let people speak. Hi, uh, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off. Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nico Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. Uh, no. The facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Oh, so she's obviously aware. So let's ask about that first. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. No. Let's talk Do about you Rosso. Know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? He's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Plantard. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. How did Plantard get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantard said he could supply me with more information. Somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Hmm, some sort of phone tap maybe? Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, uh, it's a deal. 
I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on soon with you. Uh, fine. Uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah, I wonder how long that's going to last. Okay, let's talk with Moo one more time. Sergeant Moo? Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, don't care. <laughs> Let's ask about the plant I was guy. one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantau. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. Okay, let's ask about the waitress. What is Rosso doing with that girl? Beg he pardon? is giving her the once over, as you Americans say. Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Look, Sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him, but I don't want him working his psycho weirdness on me. Ah, no, monsieur. You are confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah? What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. <laughs> See you later, Sergeant. You don't need to do that conversation. It's completely irrelevant, but it's it, it's good fun. Right, let's go down here and talk with this guy, because he's obviously... He may well have seen everything, to be fair. Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested! No, nah, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun... Gah! I thought that was it. Those automatics were quite a bunch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Okay, so he recognized it was an automatic gun, so maybe he's ex-military, maybe? Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care did. I could have knocked this block off. <laughs> did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantar. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. <laughs> did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Okay, push him a Look, bit harder. I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already! I didn't see a thing! He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. It'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? No, but you act like one, sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wondered what that bang was. Any bodies? Yeah, an old man was killed. Merd. I didn't think it was that serious. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. Hmm. Take a look at this. You told me you weren't a cop. Don't shout about it. I'm working undercover. Who are you looking for? That's confidential. I gotta go. 
Don't let me keep you. Okay. Well, we can pick something up here. Hey, stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Are we? Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nut. Okay, I get your point. Damn. This guy's got some real severe issues. Alright, let's go back to where the cafe was. There's a newspaper here. Let's pick that up for, for a start. Okay. So, we've got the assassination of Pierre Carchon in here. So, this is obviously uh, a day or two later. Uh, we've also got some handwritten, uh, something handwritten down here. Salah Eddin, 1345, whatever that means. And we've also got a few other articles as well. So, what we'll do, we'll take the paper. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. Interesting. Can we escape? Oh, we maybe the have to read all these. Referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. Okay. And we keep the newspaper, which is important. We're going to go give it to the uh, to the to the to the guy with the pickaxe. So let's uh, take it over to him. Let's see what he says. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? What do you want now? Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. We've all had bosses oh, like that. Newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at these damn bleeding out liberals. Cha! Save the dolphins, catch them and eat them. I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Now oh, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like champagne bottle corks, no? Oh dear. Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stuff it. Help yourself. Ah. So that gets rid of him. Nice. So let's go have a look at this toolbox of his. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful. Okay, so I'm guessing that's a sewer key. Yeah. It was a metal rod with a handle at one end and a short cross piece at the other. Okay, we can't go any further that way, but there was another route down here, down there. So let's go take a look down here. Oh dear, this looks a bit ominous. Into this alley, but there was no sign of him now. I was intrigued by Nico and what she could tell me about the explosion. Yes, I'm sure you're intrigued by Nico. All right, let's have a look in this bin. Whoa. I genuinely forgot about the cat. <laughs> that made me jump. There was nothing of interest. Okay. But what is of interest is that manhole, because we can lift that with the sewer key. And these are the types of puzzles we're going to be doing a lot of, is using objects to interact with the world. I'd also like to know the logistics behind that jacket. The to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. Well, it is a manhole. Let's head down. This is obviously the way the client went, or whoever it is. This is the way he went for definite, because he disappeared very quickly. Okay. Oh, something over here. Let's, let's pick that up and find out what it is. 
As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. Ooh, we must have took it off in a hurry. Can we keep going? Yes, we can. What's this? It's been quite sloppy. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. Who leaves leftovers at breakfast? Especially a cooked breakfast. What kind of monster are you? I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Oh, let's take a closer look. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. Okay. There's another ladder here, so let's uh, let's go up. See where it takes us. Oh. Hi there. Hold <laughs> it right there, you you sewer rat. <laughs> I knew you'd come back, and now I've got you. Come back. What are you talking about? Your trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? The same the truth, we were looking, looking for the clown. For a clown. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? Yes. He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu. That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon Dieu. And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Oh, he's got a fair point. Uh, well, we're waiting for an option. I think I'm gonna have a quick sip of my drink. I've got, uh, got some blueberry uh, juice here, which is uh, really, really nice. So, hmm, you don't really get blueberry juice, but uh, I saw it and I fancied it, so I bought it. Uh, let's talk about the clown again. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. Oh, dude, give it a rest. Let's ask about the waitress. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Oh, my God. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. Hm. Ah. That's what you say. Oh, I thought he was going to say, what's the difference? <laughs> Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Huh? You need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. And the suitcase? Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Okay, well we can show him some of these items. So let's let's do that. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. Okay. This guy is going to be really difficult, but there is a way to get him to open up. Let's show him Rosso's card. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Ah. Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid division? A uh, homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your 
your poise. And your smell. Oh, yes. Yeah. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Okay, so we get all the options back again. So let's start was with the briefcase. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Quite right. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. So that'll still be nothing, so let's try the waitress, the waitress again. at the cafe? You, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well. You know her? Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief I, I, she gives I, me when she visits. Beg your pardon? Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui. Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Ooh. Ooh. I don't like cutting my own toenails. I don't get anyone else to do it. What's wrong with Tell people? Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. I was going to say, that's, um, that's a very passionate uh, ex-army veteran, isn't it? <laughs> this is what I use to open the manhole cover. I have one just the same as that, monsieur. I will fetch it if you like. No, don't bother. Oh, it is no bother, monsieur. Nah, forget it. Just trying to be helpful, monsieur. Uh, the nose? Take a look at this false nose. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off the scent. Hmm. Interesting what theory. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, disgusting. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to show it to me? <laughs> Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Okay, tell me more about now, the jacket. about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> A pity, because otherwise, it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Okay, tell me more. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. <laughs> was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. I'm sure that's what we told him. <laughs> what was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. Seventy-four, ninety-eight, zero, eight, fifty-nine. You're kidding. That's his phone number? <laughs> yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honestly, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. <laughs> right, well... I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. 
I hope you catch that killer soon. Oh, George, you absolute phony. Where's this going to lead us out to, though? Ah, we're here. The had escaped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. It wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had got. Okay. Well, the other thing that's here is actually a phone, so... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's use the phone. And we'll give this Todrick a call. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget mm -hmm. it. Listen, all I want is a name. Got a bit panicky there. What are there. you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess hmm? you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. George, you sound like a psycho. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clowns. We're making a lot of very big assumptions here, and George is really hammering this guy. <laughs> Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar... God, that's dark. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Okay. It's pretty obvious we're not getting anything out of Todrick, so... Thanks for nothing, Todrick. And it's strange, because it's probably the last we're actually ever going to hear from him as well. So, let's give Nico a call. Hello, Nico Kulat. Hello, it's George. Oh, wait. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. Hmm. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone, and fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there. But who was on which side? One thing I did know. I wasn't going to get the answers sitting at my desk. Too true. Right, we're going to play as Nico for a bit, I think. So... I think let's leave for the time being. Oh, who's this? This is a rather peculiar character. Mamzer Collard. Oh, hello there. Don't tell me. I'm going to meet a tall dark Oh, fortune teller about the sound of it. No, I don't think so. Why would you say that? Oh, just a wild guess. Anyway, your cousin's female and very pretty. What? Your cousin from Marseille. How could you forget her so soon? She was only in your apartment yesterday. Oh. oh, really? Such a charming young girl. Isn't she? And in my apartment, you say? 
She let herself in, of course. She's got a key. Suddenly, everything made sense. Mm. My apartment had been bugged. That was <coughs> how Plantard knew all about my article. How did I know? Because the only cousin I have is a sweet little guy called Jean-Marc, who runs a patisserie in Le Touquet. These people were determined, which meant they were also very dangerous. Hmm, very. I suppose she'd forgotten which apartment was mine. Oh, Miss Collard, you're a mind reader. That's just what she said. Oh, I bet it was. Well, I'd better be going. See what my sweet cousin's been getting up to. Au revoir, mademoiselle. So these guys have actually like sent someone to bug Nico's apartment. So, That's quite dangerous. Where had my pretty new cousin hidden her little bug? Eh? I was going to have to search everywhere. Well, luckily for you, I already know where it is. So let's have a look in the box. Oh, this is that box she mentioned in Karshan's apartment. So we might as well have a little look at this. The, the elephant Oops. on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. But that small metal disc underneath it in the chest was a recent addition. <laughs> so how do we... Ah. Oh, cher cousine. You left me a little present. You shouldn't have. <laughs> it's quite funny, this, actually. You don't scare me. Espesta. Wow. She threw that thing pretty hard. <laughs> okay. There's no key for the box, so let's leave for now. I think. And this is kind of the world map. Now we need to go have a look at the uh, uh, the cafe. Now George isn't going to be interfering or uh, in the way. Oh damn, I've already boarded it up. Let's talk to this chap. Hello, could I ask you some questions? That depends. Are you a cop? No. I'm a journalist. Bit late, aren't you? They already took away the body. I'm doing a follow-up on this story. Wow, we've got a lot to ask about, but we'll... Tell me, are you related to the workman I saw digging the hole? Don't talk to me about flobage. Ha! Okay. He <laughs> just won a fortune on the horses and he won't give me a cent. Well, it's his money. When he was broke, he was happy to touch me for a loan. Brothers should look after each other, he used to say. He's changed his tune now, he's brassed up. They do look quite similar, to be fair. You're doing a fine job. Damn right I am. You should be writing about me, not that idiot that got blown up. Idiot. The heroes will pick up the pieces when disaster strikes. Exactly. Well, give me your best man and maybe I'll put your picture in the article. Oh, right. Uh, just give me a minute to do my hair. Oh, dear. All right, let's go in the cafe while the these. Um... <laughs> have removed the body, but nothing else looked disturbed. You don't have to talk to him, by the way. That mirror's still got a thing on it. Let's have a look. Cause before it was reflecting the plant plantar's face. Oh, what's that? A panel had been blown away, revealing a gap. From this angle, I could see that something had been lodged in the gap behind the pipes. Okay, let's we'll see if we can grab it. Behind the table were some damaged pipes. Yeah, we grabbed Voila. it. The police and forensic teams had missed a vital piece of evidence. Some kind of pouch. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Carchon's organization. I was on the right track. Yeah, because that's the cross that was on his uh, table where, if you remember. Let's have a little look, see if there's anything the in, in the, the pouch. the symbol of Cochon's organization. Inside the pouch were two items. A strange metallic artifact and a letter in some kind of code. Ah, another cipher. Another coded message using the same cipher system. So, 
Plantard was involved with Cachon. Interesting. Okay, so we've got another one of these. Um, another one of these. Now, he had the letter. So, uh, by the way, I don't know the. Um, I don't know the solution to this. I've forgotten uh, since I last played it. So. Pierre must have, or somebody must have given it to Plantard. So, because the first word on the last one was Pierre, I believe. So, I'm guessing the first word is the name. Now, Plantard is P A P L A N T A R D. That's eight letters. So, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that first word is Plantard. So, let's do that and see if that works. And, like I said, guys, I genuinely can't remember this. Um, this is from a very long time ago. I remember like most of how to get through the game, but I don't remember the intricate puzzles like this. Um, so let's do the T. Yeah, it fits a bit too well, doesn't it? Uh, so that would be R, and the last one would be D. And the next one is P something something double R something. So I'm guessing that's Pierre. So it's going to be talking about Pierre. So I don't think this lesson was given to him by Pierre. I think it was um, given to him by somebody else. Somebody involved. So. No, not that one. Let's. That one? Yeah, that's I. And that would be E. That's going to be killed. So this is a very recent letter by the looks of things. Something de uh, murderer, obviously. So that is a U, and that one is M. Murderer. Something. Must. Perhaps. I mean, that's S. No. S. No, not F. It's not muffed. The murderer muffed. So something, something, trail. Okay, that's Arno and Yamada, because they were in the last letter, if you remember. So that is an O. Uh, I'm guessing that's followed, that big word up there. That's, that's the only one that makes sense. So, Plantar, Pierre killed. Murderer must something follow trail from Arno and Yamada. So, it must be. <coughs> oh, excuse, excuse me. It must have been a cough. Um, must have, perhaps. I think we're making a, this one. We're making this a much shorter one than before. He will now something for us. He will something for us now. So, I'm guessing that's come. So, let's see. We must. B, and that'll be vigilant. So G. Plantar. There we go. Pierre Q. Murderer must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's oh. safe. She worries <gasps> him. Imelda. Look who so wrote it. Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her and for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell a story. Whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. That's insane. So Imelda did know him. Did know us, sorry. And they knew um, Thierry uh, Collard, which was we found in the last episode was um, Nico's father. The artifact had a sword laid across scales. There was a picture of Lady Justice on the lock panel in the room below the conciergerie. Oh, that's the key. I think that's the key for the. There's a there's a there's a panel. Let's go. Hey, what about my photos? Oh yeah. Uh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera. Oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. Sexist well, this pick. This woman had fooled him easily enough, and found the evidence the police had missed. 
Okay. We need to go back to the conciergerie, which is... The uh, strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. Yeah. Okay. So we're heading back to this area. Now hopefully we'll have to go through Helena Handbasket to get back in. We just left a, you know, super secret organization's room, which is completely unattended. Right, let's use the shell case to open this. Or not. The slab was too heavy for me to lift. Oh, we've got to lift it first, that's right. Duh. You've got to be so methodical in these games, like, you've got to do everything properly. <sighs> that there. On the stone cylinder over here. Now, guys, these episodes are going to be a little longer because, um, obviously, there's a lot of talking and a lot of finding things out. So, the episodes are going to be a little longer, so I hope you don't mind that. Put, put, put in the comments if it really bothers you, but I, I, I hope our hour-long episodes don't bother you. Um, let's go back in. Yes, this here. Plantard's key fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. Okay, so what's in here that's so valuable? The folders were empty. Someone had removed anything that they thought could be incriminating. Hmm. A photograph had been torn up. We don't, we, are we going to have to put it back together? If I could just arrange the pieces. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, as always, start with the edges with these sorts of things. So start with the edges and work around. Let's move these over. There's obviously a face. Uh, no, I don't know. It could be right. No, I think it's this one. They they, they tend to fit together perfectly. Uh, that one. There. This is not a difficult puzzle. Some of the puzzles in this game are like missed a level of sadism, <laughs> but uh, they're not going to come up for quite some time. That goes there. Oh my god, it can't be. Okay, well that reaction should tell you everything you need to know about this uh, this gentleman. Damn. Papa. Oh, God. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything. But not this. My father. The one person in the whole world who I truly admired. Standing with Cachon while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father. Grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, because that... I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George. Yeah, because that's the photograph we found in Carshons with uh, with him grinning at the camera, if you remember. So it's the same photograph, and that's where the uh, uprisers were being suppressed. So not a great place to be photographed, really. Okay, we're back with George for the time being. Let's go talk to this peculiar lady. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Oh, dear. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it Who only were? takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Who's that? Peculiar little man. Huh. Go on, then, tell me. my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? That's not very kind, George. 
how does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Depends how you look Can at it, I suppose. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Aww. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? <laughs> they are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. Oh dear. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Mm, I'm sure that's what you want. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. Mm. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. Evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart. Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. Damn. She was really looking. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. All right, we won't ask her about all the See items because there's no That's need. Right, monsieur, you will. Ooh, I don't like your fortune tellers. Freak me out. Right, I'm gonna go see Nico, and then we're gonna wrap this episode up. Flower seller's advice. I push the door gently, just above the lock. Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. You just let herself. Oh, yes. uh, call me George. She just let himself Hello. into a to her apartment. Take a George. It's crazy. <laughs> Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. <laughs> what happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Hmm, it's the problem, isn't it? It's, it sounds good, but... Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. <laughs> the only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, 
the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Kushin. Yeah, it's pretty clever, you know, to be fair. I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. <laughs> I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Mm. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. <laughs> It's quite funny, actually, because I actually did do uh, photography at university, and I know exactly what she means. You are billed for everything. Paper, cameras, film, the lot. It's, um, it's quite barbaric, actually. <laughs> this is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. Yeah, You're she, not interested, are you? No, she doesn't oh, give a crap, I mate. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but, well... I had a job to do. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. <laughs> it says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. That's going to be our next lead in the next episode, by the way. I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's worth showing people just to, just to get their reaction. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. Ah. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Or a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of Because the guy behind because you. I noticed the guy behind you. Got course. your ego, George. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. Right, so if we go back to the Bob map, you'll notice we have a new location. La Rizzi du Monde. And as you can see... We do have a chap to sort of uh, interrogate, but that's going to be happening in the next episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry I haven't been able to commentate much. I just don't want to talk over anything because the lines in this game are brilliant. And like I say, there are some great one-liners and there's some fantastic story here. So I don't want to ruin any of it for you. So uh, I hope you don't mind that. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and comment. Uh, let me know if you're still enjoying Broken Sword and I'll see you for another episode very shortly. Bye-bye for now.